Hey everyone, welcome to Dear Moby. That's Kat. And that's Shy. How are you doing, Kat? Uh, well, I've been better shy. I'm uh, coming off of a case of COVID. You know, I'm real amped up on some steroids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's okay. Um, I'll just be extra special hyper today. Um, how are you? Nice shirt. You're looking, yep. looking nice. Yep. I, nice I for appreciate the movie that verse. even though you were out of office with an illness, you still sent me a non-descriptive calendar invite. I always will. I always have and I always will. That's my promise to you. I mean, I can't believe we're on four episodes already. Four can you? episodes. I I can because I've seen all the questions that have been coming in and I know the one that you're going to ask me this week. All right. Are we ready? Should we debut the question? It's time for the question of the week. Drum roll, please. All right. To the chagrin of producer Luke, I'm going to look over here at my other monitor to read this question, but... This questioner uh, had a creative pin name and they used the Dear Moby submission form. So I just want to call that out. So today's question comes from Waylon with the uh, pin name Whale Lynn. Very nice pun punmanship, I should say. And Waylon says, Docker files are amazing. And I know what a huge impact they have on build time. I would love to know if y'all have any tips or tricks for how to take full advantage of the awesomeness that is Docker files. Yeah, I have so many tips and tricks uh, for Sweet. Docker files. You <laughs> might have to tell me I've been talking for too long. Um, okay. But in some of this might be, be cr crossover from like last week with kind of just mm -hmm. making containers optimal. Um, so the first thing I think is always important is picking a really good base image. Um, so we, we talked a little bit about how on Hub you can find all sorts of images. Uh, and, you know, we've got the verified images, we've got the official images uh, and all of those things. Making sure to pick an image that you can really trust uh, and is really kind of set for your, your use case will do wonders for your for your build times and and your kind of uh, image sizes. So starting off on the right image, you know, picking the slim image when you can um, is, is kind of tip number one. Tip number two is to make sure to have a Docker ignore file. So kind of like you have a git ignore file, you want to have a Docker ignore file too. So like when you're running your code, maybe if you're a Python developer like me, you end up with a lot of like random PyCache kind of stuff. When you do that copy to move your code over into your image, you don't want to bring any of that along. So having a Docker ignore can help make sure that you keep all of that stuff that doesn't need to com come along outside of your Docker image, kind of keeping it small uh, as well. And then my last big tip for today uh, is going to be using um, multiple images. So like decoupling your application. So I like to think that each container should only have one thing that it cares about. Uh, and decoupling um, things from different images makes it much easier to kind of scale and, and get it up. And it keeps those individual containers much smaller. So you'll see later on that I like to do, you know, my web server container, which is going to be in Flask, and then my database container. And those are two separate things with unique images, which makes it much easier to manage. And then I use Docker Compose to kind of coordinate all of those things together. So my three tips for the week, uh, base images, ignore files, and split things up. And we have a whole host of best practices around writing Docker files. Uh, if we can pull up my screen, you'll see I'm on the Docker docs and we've got a bunch of different stuff uh, in here, some information that goes into more detail uh, as well about how you can you know, really make things faster and clean things up. I also really like tools like Dive and Hightop, which lets you dive into um, containers and kind of see what's going on in each layer, how each layer itself independently adds space uh, and and things to the to the to the image, uh, and you can you know go ahead and look at uh, those and what's going on on each kind of level and make sure you you're able to kind of optimize and make it make it manageable and fast. So, how's that for tips, Kat? Do you think that answers Waylon's question? Yeah, I think that's fantastic. Uh, Waylon, be on the lookout. We're going to hook you up with some swag. Uh, but before I touch on swag, I just wanted to say that, you know, for someone who's not as technically inclined as you, Shy, I feel as though like container decoupling is to app development uh, as Marie Kondo is to home design, you know, make things spark joy, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> organization, have a spot for everything. I like it. Yep. It was cool. Yep. Yeah. Does Fantastic. this image make you happy? Yeah. 
I I would think so. You know, let us know in the comments. But yeah, I mean, we've had a few episodes now, and uh, by now, some of our submitters will will know kind of what swag that they get. So I'd love to see people post about it. But Waylon, swag coming your way. Amazing. Um, yeah. Should we should we talk about the extension of the month, extension of the week, extension of the the period in time? That is yes. undefined. Do it. Do your do your theater voice for extension of the period of time. Let's go. It's, it's time for the extension of the period of time. <laughs> Perfect. What is it? Okay, so this week I want to talk about Postgres. So with Postgres, um, I use a bunch of different tools to kind of manage my Postgres uh, services. So I've used Postico in the past. Uh, I've used PG Admin, um, and I, I kind of like PG Admin. So one of the things that I found when I was browsing Docker uh, Hub is that someone has actually put together an extension to uh, bring PG Admin straight into Docker Desktop. So you know they've got the instructions on how you can install these things um, as well. And I've gone ahead and pre-installed it. So I've got my PG Admin extension right here, and I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, a container that has a database in it. So I'm gonna hit the, the start button. There we go, so things are going, it's running. Um, and if we look into it, we can see we've got a database running. It's on port 5432. We've got a web server running. So now we can go over to this PG admin extension and I went ahead and already went in and added my server. Um, and small tip here, uh, is I did have to use uh, gateway gateway.docker.internal as my IP address for this. Uh, I wasn't able to use localhost. Um, so that's a that's a tip in case you're struggling to connect to a Postgres instance inside of Docker. Maybe try using one of these gateway.docker internals or a host.docker.internal as well. Um, and so here we go. We've got PG admin and we can click the down and we can click into local. Uh, Postgres and the password is Postgres because the dummy database doesn't really have anything in it. We can hit OK and there we go. We've connected to my database and we've got a full PG admin thing going and running and we can add tables, we can drop tables, we can, we can do whatever we need to. And I can do it right here from Docker Desktop. So I'm managing all of my data stuff without without leaving this one tool. And you know, I've got all my volumes here too so I can see um, my persistent databases as well, so I can keep track of all of that in in one program, which I really like. So that's my uh, extension of the week is the PG admin uh, extension for Docker Desktop. So go check it out. Nice, thanks, Shy. I suppose it's time for one of my Your favorite, favorite segment. segments. <laughs> yes, the fact of the week. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's let's dive into this, Shy, um, because that I saw is an your interesting choice of words there. It was intentional. It was intentional. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit more about this getting over fear of fish thing? Because it's been months since the world found out about your fish phobia. What's going on with it? How are you moving forward? Give us the lay of the land. Yeah. So. If you all missed out on DockerCon, or as I like to think of it, the conference where Kat uh, decided to to uh, out you. mention my out me for being terrified of fish because they look yeah. weird and they're they're scary and it's a matter of um, opinion, shy matter of yeah. opinion, but whatever. Yeah, so so I've decided to to get over my phobia, and so I'm going on vacation because we get unlimited vacation at Docker. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna go learn to scuba dive in Aruba. And so they're gonna teach me how to survive underwater. Um, they give me homework to do before I get there. So all the stuff they would normally do in the classroom, I have to do before I get to Aruba. Um, wow. And fun fact, fish are super dangerous. <laughs> this, this whole thing is like about how don't touch a jellyfish or don't touch a, a fish with, with spines and just don't touch fish in general. Don't touch anything. <laughs> and so, Fish are pretty scary, Cat. I'm I'm not feeling like my phobia is going away so far. All right, I feel like this could backfire on us a little bit. You might come back even more scared of fish, but I mm -hmm. don't know. I you got to take pictures. You know, the people are going to want to see you underwater, just like frolicking with your fish friends at a safe distance. This is great, Shy. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Speaking of b being proud, I hear that you are on top of your Halloween preparation game this year uh, and that you're going to be going as Avril Lavigne. 
Yeah, I I am. I am shy. I'm I'm gonna be going as the let go era Avril. Okay. Um, the coolest Avril, one that's, would say. That's the one from when she was in Frozen. Very funny. Very funny. Shy. She wasn't in Frozen. Uh, but uh, oh, dang it, shy. Oh my god. <laughs> Very funny. I was thinking so literally. <laughs> okay, because I was about to be like. Avril Lavigne is not Kristen Bell. Anyway, yes, uh, the Frozen era Avril. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, the best Avril. Tie wearing Avril. I'm going to be wearing my Doc Martens, uh, a white tank top, you know, camo pants. It's going to be very cool. And uh, I'm very excited to channel her. I feel like she's like my inner essence, like very angsty, very like, you know, independent. Love it. Love Avril. Yeah. Love her. Yeah, great songs. Yeah. I, I like Skater Boy. Yeah, well, who and doesn't? I definitely know other Avril Lavigne songs besides that one. But unfortunately, I'm that's sure all do. we have time for. You, you're not going to be able to <laughs> quiz me on that this week. So. Next uh, time. Kat, how, do, how do people ask questions? <gasps> I'm so glad you asked. So down in our YouTube description, uh, feel free to click the link that takes you to Ask Moby where you can submit a question via a form. Um, you can also just pop a, a question in Slack, uh, tag us on social uh, using the hashtag Dear Moby, but we will definitely see your question if you use the submission box. We're already getting an increase of questions and we love to see them come in. Uh, you can also leave a comment on the video as well. So we, we love to see your comments, your feedback, your questions. So yeah, we look forward to hearing from you. Bye everyone. Bye.